Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Camping is a spring thing, and Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune is here to get you started this spring. Whether it's RV accessories, parts, RV service, or RV sales, Pawpaw's Campers has you covered. Just call our toll-free line, 800-728-2267. That's 800-728-CAMP. Or go to our website at pawpawsniceprice.com. We're not that far from where you are. Come and see us today. Welcome to the Kirk for some Friday night baseball. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW, 1320 AM, 106.9 FM. You can catch us on the portal, and you can catch us streaming on the YouTube channel. That's at PMHS Sports. I am joined tonight by the man, the myth, the legend, Coach Seth Hayden is sitting beside me. This is going to be an enjoyable adventure. I can't wait for this, Coach yeah, Seth. Yeah, I'm excited, too. This is my first ever baseball broadcast, and uh, I'm just really excited to see the Tide out here tonight. Um, I, 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 he was real gracious on the man, the myth, the legend. I mean, I was only a base runner when he came to baseball. Uh, just a couple stolen bases, but nothing major. Um, I'm just excited to see what these Tide boys are going to do out here tonight. Um, I think we got Tanner on the mound. Tanner Busby's yeah, on the man, mound tonight for the, the Tide. And, uh, you know, with him, uh, you got Landon behind the plate. I think they just got a phenomenal infield. Outfield's uh, also great. Um, Kyle's got an opportunity to, uh, uh, I was told, to um, break some history tonight. So we'll talk about that. I don't want to jinx him too much, okay. but I'm right. pretty excited about that. Well, we will definitely break history. What we don't want to do is run any tall sweeps. So if you see any tall sweeps tonight, you know that something has happened. I know Coach Seth is probably much better <laughs> well, yeah. operated to talk about, you know, tall sweeps. But if we see the 48 power, yeah. something is going horribly wrong. Yeah, if you hear me calling split cover three or <laughs> anything like that or we're running guts green, you know, we're, we're not doing it right. Something so. has went south. Yeah. Well, we're glad to be here. We are at the Kirk. As I said, Picayune is taking on Hancock tonight in the second game of the series. Picayune defeated Hancock 9-5 to Tuesday night behind a pretty strong offense. I'll give you some stats here in just a second. And some uh, pretty good pitching as Brady Robertson started the game. Kyler King came in and got the win in relief. Tonight we'll have Tanner Busby on the mound, big right-hander. And, uh, you know, Coach, I know that, that – um, you had not got to see a lot of baseball this year, but you've watched a lot of Tanner Busby over the last four years, yes, and he's sir. just been a workhorse for the Tide. I mean, it's just unbelievable how, how the kid has progressed. I, you know, I got the chance to coach him in eighth grade. Uh, I was the eighth grade junior high coach, and um, just to watch him progress to the, the pitcher he is and, and be able to work pitches and, and work in and out of the zone. Um, I mean, he's, he's going to college and play college baseball for a reason, and That's he's, right. he's doing a mm-hmm. phenomenal job. That's right. Well, as I said, you're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. We're going to take just a, a break here. Hear a word from our sponsor. Mr. Jerry Grubbs is going to start announcing the teams. The JV game ran a little bit late, so we're running just a couple of minutes behind. If you just tuned in, you haven't missed anything yet. Both teams have taken infield, and we're getting ready for the public address announcer to announce them. We'll play the anthem. Uh, we'll have a meeting at the mound, which I believe has already happened, and then we'll be ready for baseball. We'll be back in just one minute. Thank you. 
Welcome to the river where education meets excellence. Join the Wildcat family and dive into our lively campus. Make friends, join clubs, get involved, and create memories. Experience academic excellence with our dedicated faculty. Explore cutting edge facilities designed for your success. Choose PRCC for an education that shapes your future. Pearl River, where you can roar with champions. Hey neighbors, it's that time of year again. It's springtime. Make that short drive to Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaw's has a nice selection of new and used trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Please go to our website, pawpawsniceprice.com, and see multiple pictures of our entire inventory. Pawpaw's Campers, having fun, selling fun. Tommy Upton here along with Coach Seth Hayden, defensive coordinator for the Picayune Maroon Tide, sitting in tonight. Joining me as we are getting ready for the second game of the series, Hancock taking on your Picayune Maroon Tide. So, uh, yeah, Kerry, I know that say maybe a little bit muffled. I'm working on the mix here to see if we get a little better. Text me and let me know. Maybe we were a little bit hot. So if we got a little bit of, of muffled sound, we, we uh, apologize for that. We'll see if we can get that corrected before we, we get going with baseball tonight. Let me give you – the lineup here as we're about to get started for the Maroon Tide. It's a familiar lineup if you've been listening in for the last few weeks. Not much has changed. Uh, Parker Helton will be in center field. He's leading off. Kyler King will be at shortstop. Jamie Lumpkin's going to be at second. Morgan Kraft will be at first. Cooper Moreau will be at third. Landon Watts will be catching. Brady Robertson will be in right field tonight. Uh, Landon Franklin will be the DH. He'll be hitting for Tanner Busby, who will be on the mound. And Justin Stockstall will be in left field. And that's your starting lineup for the Picky Maroon Tide. Let me give you the Hawks because I do also have them here. One that, they had that lineup probably for the past three years. Yeah, I don't think it's changed a whole lot. And I don't think Hancock looks like it's going to change a whole lot either. Jude, Jude Ulrich will be in center field leading off. Brandon Arcement will be pitching tonight. He'll be hitting second. Jeffrey Hopgood will be at third base. And Jackson Knight will be at first base. Hunter Kuhn will be the DH. He'll be hitting for Evan Brothers, who will be in right field. Matthew Cuevas will be the shortstop. He'll be hitting sixth. Landon Shields will be catching, and he'll be hitting seventh. Chase Brown will be at third base. He'll be hitting eighth. And Gavin Nikes will be in left field, and he will hit number nine for the Hawks. The Hawks came in with the same exact record as the Tide in district, which was seven and two. Tide improved to eight and two with a win over the M. Hawks fell to seven and three. Mm -hmm. Both are still chasing the George County Rebels after George County swept or not swept. They won yeah. two out of three last uh, week from Picayune. And we had two pretty good games, Coach. I don't know if you get to catch any of those. Yeah, it was a, a, a six to five ordeal here uh -huh. Tuesday I was night. At, I was here at that game. So we spotted on four runs in the first inning. Yes, sir. And then came back and um, had a good ball game. Really played well. Went down there and had a thriller. Got beat two to one in eight innings on Friday night. Came back here and just everything that could went wrong. It went wrong. It got beat uh, yeah. two to nothing, and it was just wasn't it wasn't close from the time they said go. Right. So you know, I've, I've watched a lot of baseball the past couple of years, and um, this year was my first game to make that George County game on Tuesday. I mean, y'all do such a phenomenal job of broadcasting <laughs> while I leave the home. But uh, we came here, me and Miss Hayden, we sat in the front, and uh, we thought we were bad luck. So, but the tide pulled it out. I was to watch that. I watched that game um, uh, on the live stream. Uh, we were in Jackson for a state championship powerlifting that Saturday, that Friday. Right. And uh, we watched it and came with extra innings. And uh, you know, you you hate it for the boys. And then we didn't catch it much on Saturday. But man, I just I heard the tide took that one on the chin a little bit. Uh, yeah, it was ugly, and it never was not ugly. But you know, you know, baseball is a game of failure, and, and uh, hopefully the boys bounce back, and they did on Tuesday, and. Uh, Got to win, so we just got to keep on rolling. That's what we got to do. That's exactly what we got to do. And speaking of rolling, we're going to do that. We're going to roll into one more break here. Is uh, I believe Mr. Jerry is fixed to get wound up. The meeting at the mound or the plate has happened. So he's getting ready to announce and do the national anthem. We'll try to get back and catch that for you. And we'll be ready for baseball. You're listening to the Pawpaws, Campers, and Cars pregame show on WRJW. 
Hey friends, camping's a spring thing, and spring is here. Check out this new 2024 Wildwood FSX 174BH. This travel trailer has a front queen bed, rear bunks, and only weighs 2,899 pounds. MSRP is 24,398, reduced to only 13,988. A brand new 2024 bunkhouse trailer for only 13,988. Off Walls Campers is not that far from where you are. Come and see us. Welcome to the river, where education meets excellence. Join the Wildcat family and dive into our lively campus. Make friends, join clubs, get involved, and create memories. Experience academic excellence with our dedicated faculty. Explore cutting edge facilities designed for your success. Choose PRCC for an education that shapes your future. Pearl River, where you can roar with champions. Hey friends, camping is a spring thing, and Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune is here to get you started this spring. Whether it's RV accessories, parts, RV service, or RV sales, Pawpaw's Campers has you covered. Just call our toll-free line, 800-728-2267. That's 800-728-CAMP. Or go to our website at pawpawsniceprice.com. We're not that far from where you are. Come and see us today. Tommy Upton back here at the Kirk on a beautiful Friday night. Coach, we looked at the weather the last few days, and, and it's a big turnaround from where it was two days ago. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I can't believe we weren't in school. You know, I'm wanting to practice junior high ninth grade football, and uh, we get a phone call, you know, the alert. Hey, we, we can't um, – they're having school, so we've got to cancel. That's football right. and everything so it was an awful day and we uh, pray for those in the path of those tornadoes and pray for a speedy recovery and i think we're ready for the national anthem here at the kirk Tommy Upton back here at the Kirk, and I think we're just about ready for baseball. As you are getting ready to listen or watch, depending on what you're, how you're consuming this media here tonight, um, as the g game two of a three-game series, Picayune won the first game Friday night, nine to five, in a a very windy affair. Coach Seth, it was um, about a thirty-mile-an-hour sustained wind with gusts. A little bit higher than that as they were preparing for that nasty weather that came through the next day. Um, sorry, I got you turned down. There you go. Yes, sir. I bet. I mean, um, any balls carry out? Uh, actually, uh, Coop hit one out, but he had to catch uh, uh, the downwind, and then he got it out. I think while the, the wind was blowing, it was holding everything in the park, but he actually got a time where uh, where it wasn't blowing. And uh, – and lifted one out into right field. We actually hit some balls really hard. Uh, Morgan Kraft and Kyler King hit balls right. just on the nose. Morgan's probably would have went out on any other night in any other park. But um, it stayed in the park. It was just a routine fly ball. And, and um, Kyler's was the same way. He hit yeah. a laser, but it hit it right at the outfielder, and it was just a loud out. So uh, well, hit some balls hard, but uh, – we ran track yesterday in Biloxi with that gust, and um, if you was running on the home stretch, you got the wind in your back, so you was rolling. But when you <laughs> turned that corner on the back stretch, it was right in your 
face. That's right. And uh, your times, your splits weren't very good. But uh, so we got no win tonight. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous night for baseball. I mean, I wouldn't want to be any other place. Yeah, it is gorgeous. Looking at the Super Doppler window here at the Super Doppler watch, it says 69 degrees. And and uh, Coach Seth is right. The flag is absolutely limp and still out in center field. It'll be a little cool here as the sun goes down. It's a beautiful day, mid 70s, and uh, no humidity to speak of here. Just the uh, really the other side of the coin from the other day, the nasty weather that came through really couldn't ask for a more beautiful spring day, and we're glad to be spending it here at the Kirk. And we're thankful that you are spending a little bit of your Friday evening with us. We always love to hear from you. If you are listening or watching, let us know. 601-590-5950. 601-590-5950. So first batter here for... The Hawks is going to be Jude Ulrich. He'll step in here against Tanner Busby, where the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. Busby's going to stand in here. He'll get a sign from Landon Watts. Here's the first pitch, and we're underway. Oh, that's going to be a strike. That's going to be a good ball on the outside part of the plate for a strike. Here's the 0 1 pitch. That's going to be in there for a strike. 0 2 quickly now to Urich. Yeah, so now the batter's got to really try to get out there and defend something. That's right. Got to do something. That one's going to be pulled foul down to third base line, so the count will remain 0 2. See, I guess, Tommy, that's why I was never really good. Hitter, uh, I'm swinging at everything. So I, I was getting O2 real quick. <laughs> yeah, well, some some people don't mind hitting, you know, deep in the hole like that. Other people, it really freaks them out. So, uh, thankfully, we got some folks on the tied bench that it doesn't matter. That was going to be up high for a ball. One, two. Now to Yorich. As Busby tried to get him to fan or offer at a high fastball. He did not. Mm. Here's a one, two from Busby. That's going to be down in the dirt. Two, two now to Yorich. He so as a, hit, back. as a hitter, you know, you're down 0-2, and now you battle back 2-2. Are you, you looking to, for a certain pitch, or are you just looking for something in your wheelhouse? Well, or? Sometimes you can get away with, with that looking for a pitch. With Busby, you can't. You can't try to look at a, any other pitch but a fastball and then try to adjust to a curveball. Busby threw him a good break and pitch there that Yorich couldn't do anything with, so he'll go down swinging. On a, on a nice, nasty breaking yeah. pitch. But Busby's got such good speed and movement, you just have to look fastball and adjust breaking pitch. That's really all you can do. Because right, if right. you try to start looking all speed, he'll throw the fastball by you. Mm. That's why he's going to be a college baseball player That's next right. year. So that'll bring up a next hitter. I didn't get a number on Number you. four. Number four. Thank you. Uh, Brandon Arsenal. He's a pitcher, and he takes first ball up high, 1-0. That one's going to be fouled off down the right field line. That'll even to count it one and one. We're just underway here. If you tuned in a little late, we got started a little late. JV game ran a little bit long. Had a first pitch ceremony tonight. It's always good to get those first pitches uh, ceremonies with the young kids. That's you right. You know, get them interested in room tile baseball. And there's another foul ball down the first baseline, one, two. That's one of the things I pride um, with our athletic program. We, you know, Coach Feely does a good job, especially with our youth in uh, football, doing our run-throughs with the youth night. That one's going to be ground ball to the second baseman. It's going to eat Jamie up. I was kind of waiting to see what I was going to call there, Coach. Not very hard. It hit right at him, and uh, he just kind of ate it up. Didn't even make the throw over, so that'll be a E4 yeah. for the second batter. Yeah, you hate that because that's just a routine ground ball to second base. You know, you think you're going to flip it over and get two outs. But, hey, it's, baseball is one of them games. You know, things are going to go wrong just like life. Anything's going to go wrong. How do you bounce back and overcome the adversities? Jeffrey Hopgood will step in now with a runner on first and one out for the Hawks. He gets from the right side. A very good football player, too. He's going to foul one off the right side. So, it'll be 0-1. He will start his count. So just a little Rick um, about Mr. Hopgood. I know his uh, father Jeff real well, and uh, this young man, um, awesome dual sport athlete with football and baseball, and uh, was a tremendous athlete playing linebacker and fullback for the Hawks this year. Well, we wish him the best, but just not tonight. No, you're right. 
He'll be in here at 0-1. Here comes Busby's pitch. That's going to be fouled off down the right field line. So he'll go down in the count 0-2. Does Hopgood. He looks like a football player. Yeah, real short and squatty, um, strong. That's right. Um, he looks like he's a strong kid. Got a runner at first. One out here, 0-2, just underway in the top of the first. No score so far. That one's going to stay up high for a ball, 1-2. Now, Mr. Tommy, is it just me or is it Collar, Collar playing kind of shallow at, sh- at shortstop right now? He's not playing real far back. Is that something different with the tie defense? Well, he's cheating in a little bit, and that's because he needs to be in place for the double play. Mm-hmm. So the ball is hit on the infield. He needs to be able to get there. I understand. Yes, so sir. So typical, they would call that double play depth, and mm-hmm. that's pretty normal for him. And for most shortstops, if there's a potential double play, nobody on, he probably plays a little deeper. So he can has, he has a greater range. Mm-hmm. He can cover more territory left and right. Yes, sir. But with a runner on, he has to kind of cheat in. You, you, you caught it so he can get to the bag if needed. Here's the pitch. That's going to be, uh, excuse me, pop straight up, uh, foul. Count will remain 2-2. Tried to check his swing, couldn't hit it off top of the plate. Bounces up, landing, grabs it. So the count will remain 2-2 two and two to hop good. Yeah, Tanner's, um, he's, he's battling, but uh, I think, you know, I love our chances with our board number eight on the mound, Mr. Yeah, Busby. He's, he's been a, a rock star for us for the last four years. That one's going to be fouled off. Another, excuse me, Busby throwing. I got the radar set up tonight. He's throwing 87-88 is where he's hitting on the on the gun. He will push it to 90 um, that's, that's as he kind of gets warm up. Yeah, he, he, he's got a good arm, good lively arm. Got good moving, and when he's got a good breaking pitch, man, he is really, really tough to hit. You know, I got a funny story uh, to tell you. you know, so, Collar played football this past season, and I asked Collar, I said, Collar, if I knew you were throwing fastballs and I got in the batter's box, you think I could hit it? He, he said, no way. <laughs> and Collar doesn't throw as fast as Tanner, so I couldn't imagine trying to hit a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. <laughs> yeah, Collar's got a big breaking pitch, too. He, uh, both of them are tough to hit. That was going to be hit on the ground to Jamie. Should be a double play. He'll flip it to second. Collar will flip it over to first. But Morgan has to come off the bag to make the play. Cannot a- apply the tag. So we'll get Fielder's Choice mm-hmm. out at second. Yeah, you get the lead runner. We will get that lead runner. You're right. Hopkins will now stand down at first. And Jackson Knight will step in for the Hawks. That's a good-looking kid. Yeah, he's a big kid. Old thick leg. That's right. Hopkins is at first. Two outs. No score here. Jackson Knight hitting for the Hawks. First pitch is down low for a ball, 1-0. He was just a bit outside on that Just one. a bit outside. Yep. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that, Mr. Tommy. I just <laughs> You'll probably get your opportunity tonight. <laughs> probably get to fulfill that dream. Oh, man, this is so much fun. I'm having a great time already. It's only the first inning. That's right. Don't use them all up now. we got a long game. Throw down to first by Watts is not in time. And the pitch was a ball. So 2-0, hop good. And Watts will run hop good. Um, Run, um, I'm sorry, 2-0 to Knight. Thank you. Hopgood will get run back to first. He'll get his lead now. Busby will come set. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be in there for a strike, 2-1. Hmm. Beautiful night at the Kirk. Crowd is building. It's been a steadily, a steady arriving crowd. Got good standing room down in front of the concession stand. Good Hawk crowd over there, too. So. Oh, yeah. It's only 30 minutes That's right. from fieldhouse to fieldhouse on a straight bus. Straight down so. Texas flat top, black top, and there you are. That was right going to be hit right at Jamie, and he'll make the catch. Oh, uh, so, Jamie will get hit three times this inning. He makes two of them, and that's really all we needed as the Tide to make the uh, Hawks go down. They tried to have a little noise, but they were able to get a fielder's choice and then a line out. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Get back in the game with Dodd Therapy Center. Jamison Dodd has the specialties and experience to get your athlete back in the game, including indoor turf, Hivamat, blood flow restriction, trigger point dry needling, and much more. Dr. Dodd and Dodd Therapy Center is also specializing in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call at 769-242-2636 or visit us at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune and get back in the game. Hey friends, camping is a spring thing, and Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune is here to get you started this spring. Whether it's RV accessories, parts, RV service, or RV sales, 
Paw Paws Campers has you covered. Just call our toll-free line, 800-728-2267. That's 800-728-CAMP. Or go to our website at pawpawsniceprice.com. We're not that far from where you are. Come and see us today. Tommy Upton here at the Kirk along with Coach hey, Hayden as uh, he's Jenny. sitting in tonight doing a great job. He's doing hey, dual right. duty over here, playing, spinning the tunes for the PA. Yeah, and, and scoreboard. All, and all, doing the scoreboard and also giving you a little analysis. So yes, we appreciate sir. him stepping in. We also got Kevin Vice out there on the camera. If you're watching the YouTube stream, appreciate Kevin. And, and appreciate you guys hanging with us as we're learning how to do some of this stuff, quite honestly, but we're having a good time. Uh, Brandon Arsum is going to be on the mound for Hancock. He's got a 372 ERA. He's one and one on the year. They don't give us any other stats. I don't have any innings, mm-hmm. strikeouts. He is a right hander. Leading off for the Tides going to be Parker Helton. Yeah. The ninth spot the last couple of years, but this year he's hitting from the leadoff spot and just done a great job. That one's going to be in there for a strike 0 1 to Parker. I want to remind you that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank. FNB Picking, where they are picking Maroon Tide Proud. Stop by the main branch at 121 East Canal Street for all your banking needs. Parker's just a, he's just an awesome kid, man. You know, you just want him to do well, not because he's just a great baseball player, but uh, he's just a great kid. He's fun to be around. You know, you, he makes everybody around him a better person. Uh, that's the kind of folks I like to be around, but he's down 0-2 now, so he's got to choke up on that little short bat of his and do something with it. Here's the 0-2 pitch. That one's going to be lifted out into center. Center fielder is going to move over into right or left center field, and he'll make the catch. The ball just lifted, not hit extremely hard, and stayed out in the air long enough for the center fielder to move over. And he'll record the first out of the inning. Nobody on. So nobody on and one out now. Shortstop. Kyler King will step in. We're going to tie shortstop. Yeah, I, man, I, I'm a huge Kyler King fan. I'm so proud of this young man. Um, got to play. He got to play football this year. Um, he was a huge success for the Maroon Tide football team. And uh, he's doing a phenomenal job here with the baseball team. And he's going to get to play some college baseball, man. Good for him. Yeah, he's he's just an all-around good athlete. I think he's one of those good kids that you're talking about also. Oh, yeah. You know, just, he was a three-sport athlete at one time. And, you know, it's just so much – it's so demanding playing um, high school sports. Um, especially here at Picking because we demand so much of the kids and their time, and they do a phenomenal job. We've got multiple um, kids that have dual sports, but, uh, you know, you got to pick and choose at least two. Right, to be successful. Yeah. 1-1 one, one now to King. He took a ball and a strike. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be inside. Almost hit him. He gets out of the way 2-1. Yeah, he's one of those guys that kind of make you sick because he's pretty good at anything he picks up, really. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter what shape the ball is. He seemed to be able to do something with it. Yep, yeah, and he's a great kid, too, man. I just I, I just like love being around him. I'm so glad he played football this year. I, I'm going to miss him, man. He was a guy. We'll talk about him for just a second. He's going to foul one off and go 2-2. You know, he didn't play. I think he played a couple of years ago football. Didn't play. Didn't play year before last, and then played this senior year for you. Yes, sir. And uh, he he was wound up being our free our starting free yeah, safety. He, but I remember that the, the first game against Brandon, he got lit up, and he wouldn't mind me saying this because he did on a couple of different plays. But to watch him grow the next couple of games, yeah. it was like, hey, I don't normally get beat, and I'm, I don't really like this. Well, you know. And just, he, he just grew. It was yeah. fun to watch him grow, you know, because he, he did. He, he got burned and missed the play and missed the ball, and, and then I think he got serious after that. Yeah, you're just like anything. You, um, He's going to lift one off. off straight up. Third baseman's going to come in by the pitcher's mound, and he'll make the play. Yeah, so it was, it was fun to watch him Got to be challenged because, quite honestly, he wasn't challenged many years. Even as a freshman, he was a heck of a baseball player out here. Oh, yeah. He started for the tie his freshman year oh, right. at second base. Jamie Lumpkin will step in now for the tie. Two outs after King pops up to the third baseman. Parker pops out to the center fielder. King will step in now. Second baseman, he was busy in the field in the first inning. See what he does here with the bat in the bottom of the first. That one's going to be outside for a ball. Jamie was another one of them dual sport athletes. He decides to stick it with baseball, and I think it's paying off for him. You had a couple of guys I know that you were kind of jonesing to have out there on the on the football that this field this past year. Busby, I think, was one of them. Maybe uh, he wanted to come out. That one's going to be hit up the middle. The shortstop's going to go over, knock it down, but he can't do anything with it. It'll kick by him and get out into center field. So that'll be a single by Jamie as he got one off the end of the bat but got it just hard enough to get it past the shortstop. 
yeah, great piece of hit, man. I mean, that's what we need. Um, you always like to have two out rallies, so hopefully, you know, Todd rolls one in. Morgan Kraft will step in now, the big right-hander. Dual sport commit for Pearl River Community College. He'll vie for a kicking position and also play on the baseball team. <clears throat> Tom, hit, I gotta, outs- I'm sorry, i got to okay. correct you. He's a three-sport athlete. Three-sport athlete. Yeah, he's a you. swimmer. Swimmer, that's right. That's right. With that a body a, like that, he's got a lot of buoyancy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> oh, 01 to Kraft. He, he's filled out. How about that? He's yeah. filled out over the last few years. Big boned. We got nice. tickled to him. He hit one a couple of weeks ago and, and stretched it into a triple. And I thought we was about to bring him a sandwich out there to third base because it'd right. be like me trying to get out there. But he did it. That's going to be a throw down. Jamie's going to try to get to second. And they got him. They got him. That was a good throw by the Hancock catcher. One hopped it to the shortstop who came over, and he just applied the tag as Jamie went by. So the title run themselves out of an inning. After getting a little bit of traffic, Morgan will still be hitting when we come back. When we head to the top of the second, there's still no score here at the Kirk. Abby Turnage, lead mammography technologist, Highland Community Hospital. Mammograms are important because they help us do early detection. A mammogram is never going to keep you from getting breast cancer, but early detection is what is going to make you have your best possible outcome. We want you to get your mammogram as early as possible, and you should have those yearly beginning at age 40. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. Dr. Lori Blackmer and Dr. Mark Hutto at Picayune Eye Clinic are experienced optometrists who are passionate about your vision care. Picayune Eye Clinic will cater to all of your vision needs, answer any eye care questions you may have, and supply you with the most up-to-date optometric information and fashion eyewear and frames in order to keep your eyes clear and healthy. They've been providing complete eye care for over 30 years. The clinic is at 908 6th Avenue in Picayune. Give Picayune Eye Clinic a call today at 601-798-4182 and begin to see things more clearly. Tommy Hupton along with Coach Seth Hayden back here at the Kirk. We're heading into the second inning. Got no score. Todd runs himself out of an inning. There is uh, tried to swipe a base on a little bit of hit and run, Coach, and uh, just got caught, and that happens sometimes. Hey, you know, you try to put the pressure on them to, um, to make plays, and sometimes those guys make plays. You know, we, right. we got a great saying, you know, the other team practices too. That's right. So. That's right. Hunter Coon's going to step in here for the Hawks. He'll lead off the second against Tanner Busby. Busby's first pitch is going to be outside for a ball, 1-0. The first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune. Place for all your banking needs. Ms. Susan Wilson and her staff are ready to service you at the North Picayune branch on Cooper Road, just off of exit 6. Go by and see Ms. Susan for a long. That one's going to be fouled off, 1-2. Now to Coon. Came into the game hitting 305 for the Hawks. Is that pretty good, That's pretty good. Jackson Knight is a leading hitter at 400, a little over 400. That one's going to be lifted foul down the right field line, so it'll stay 1-2. Hawks seem to be struggling a bit to catch up to Busby's fastball. Lots of fouls down the right side. That's that's pretty good. Um, didn't Tanner go uh, seven complete innings against George County last, last week? He did. Wow, that's incredible. That one's going to be hit on the ground but by the shortstop, and it'll get out into left field. So Kuhn will lead off. This second inning with a single as he hits a sharp ground ball past Kyler in the 5-6 hole. He'll stand at first. Matthew Cuevas will step in now for the Hawks. You're going to get a lot of Cuevases and knee cases, Usually right? do. We ladders. usually do. Some Ladners. No Ladners that I saw the other night. I mean, they might sneak one in here as a courtesy runner, but <laughs> I didn't see one. That one's going to be a foul, but it's going to it's going to be a bunt, but it's going to get foul, I should say, as Cuevas was trying to move the runner up from first. Had a good idea, just couldn't quite get it to fall. You know. Mr. Tommy, I was uh, when I was at the game last tu- thir- yeah last Tuesday against George County, I saw something I haven't seen in a long time, and that was a bunt third strike. Yep, it got called out. Yes, sir. If you foul it off on that third strike, it is an out. That's the that's the downside, and that's why many people don't do it. But some, there right. are situations where you need to need to try, and that was one of the situations where we tried, and we just didn't execute. So Clavis is going to square again here. Cooper's going to come over. Busby's going to throw to first. And now, run Coon back. I'm a big believer in player safety and, and, and doing what you can to protect players, but um, 
the when you show bunt and pull back and hit it that's that's really dangerous on third base. It baseman. is that slash. Yeah. That slash can be uh can be dangerous. Clavis is going to get this one down. Busby, no, Watts is going to pick it up and make the throw to first. Busby had to get out of the way there at the last minute as uh, he was going to pick the ball up and throw it to first. Watts called him off wisely as he had the momentum going yeah. towards first. He bare hands the ball, makes a good play to first. They'll get the runner at first, but the runner at first will get down to second. Good communication by uh, Tanner and uh, Landon. Good defense. You know, that's just well – well played baseball. You That's know, right. you get a runner on first, bunt them over, and see if you can hit them in. Hopefully, the tie defense steps it up. So I've got something going here with a runner at second. Landon Shields step in here for Hancock. That one's going to be right down the middle for a strike. 0-1. Hawks have had base runners in both innings. Unable to get anybody past second uh, so far. See if we can maintain that. Yeah, let's keep it that way. Here's a pitch from Busby. That's going to be in there for a strike. 0-2 quickly to Shields, who came into the game hitting at about 211. Here's the 0-2 swing and a miss. So 1-2-3 goes Shields. And that's what we need out of Tanner. He just needs to, you know, stay in command of the – get ahead of the, these batters and – and really work. That's right. Sometimes yeah. you need to strike out, especially in a big spot, and Busby is one that can give you. So with two outs now, Chase Brown will step in for the Hawks. He'll hit with a runner still down at second. No score here in the top of the second. Here's the first pitch. That one's going to be Good in there strike. for a strike. 0-1. We got started a little late if you joined us late. Um, so you haven't missed a whole lot. We're in the top of the second, as I said. No score, two outs, man on second. That one's going to be lifted out into left field. Stockstill's coming over, and he oh. will not be able to make the play. He had a long run, Coach. Gave it a good effort, kicked off the heel of his glove, just not able to secure it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was a long, long run for Justin Stocks. It'll make um, – would have been a heck of a play for him to make too. But uh, you know what? Hey, two strikes on the batter, so – Let's go get him right here. That's right. Turns into just a long strike. So it'll be 0-2. Now to Brown. As he'll come Man. back, get his bat, and step back in. That would have been a great play by Stockstill. He had a long run. He, he was playing over in left field, and that ball was almost on the fence down the left field line. Yeah, he's been doing some sprints. <laughs> that was a good sprint for him yeah, right there. He was warmed up. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing. Got him. And a miss. So Brown will go down. They'll have to throw it down to yeah, first as Watts right bobble the ball. But the out is secure. So we're headed to the bottom of the second. You're listening to Maroon Tie Baseball on WRJW. Locally owned and operated, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. Both locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and on Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4, now have new hours. 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sundays at the Highway 43 location. Get the early bird special Monday through Thursday. Remember, when it comes to your vehicle shine, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Looking for a gym to help you become a healthier you? The gym at Picayune is the place to be with its large open facility, modern equipment, and knowledgeable staff led by owner and operator Edgar Woods. The gym at Picayune offers a variety of workouts and classes to meet your specific needs with 24-7 access. The gym accepts silver sneakers, which is available at no cost for adults 65 plus through select Medicare plans. More space, more equipment, more growth. The gym at Picayune. Tommy Upton along with Coach Seth Hayden. We're back here at the Kirk heading to the bottom of the second with the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, F&B Picayune. We so, always put you first. Stop by the South Branch and see Miss Tracy Acker on Memorial Boulevard for all your banking needs. Go ahead. So I was just going to say, you know, Morgan's get the – he gets the finishes at bats, you know, since Jamie was thrown out at second. Um, that was always, a, you know, didn't play much baseball. I didn't understand, you know, you still have to record that out for that batter. That's right. That's right. That first pitch, I was looking down at my screen. What was it? Was it a ball or a strike? Did you catch it? I was looking down trying to get the right batter because I flipped the batter over. There's a ball. And that one's going to be outside for a ball. 
We'll see if the umpire gives us here. I can't miss the first pitch there. I believe it's 2-0 to Morgan. I'm just going to go with that, 2-0. I like it. We'll go 2-0. We'll, we'll claim it. Morgan looks for the next pitch. That's going to be way outside, so 3-0 now. Let's see. It appears that I believe we're right. We Umpire's any, not giving us a signal. We didn't get any fuss from the Hancock side. So yeah. 3-0 now to the first baseman, Morgan Kraft. Sorry, I had Players to flip, yelling, my, ball four. flip my screen over. That was going to be lifted. He swings 3-0 and pops it up to the second baseman. Actually, the right fielder is going to come call him off and make that play. So I don't mind Morgan swinging at a 3-0 pitch, but if you're going to swing at a 3-0 pitch, you need to try to wow. hit it out to Catahoula out there. That's what you need to try to do, and that one yeah. just got popped up. So yeah, Morgan's Tom, not happy, I know. You know, my baseball IQ is very, very low. I'd say that elementary state, but so I thought you don't swing at a 3-0 pitch. You generally don't, but it, it, it can be a good pitch to just – come uncurled on because if they groove one and, and it was not a terrible pitch i don't i don't mind the idea and and morgan certainly has the capability to do it he just missed that one yes sir cooper's up next he's going to swing and miss on the first pitch oh one he's got power too he went big fly the other night at hancock in a little bit of a win uh, out to right field so you know, he's starting to get a little hot he struggled a bit early in the year and, and but and but he's kind of settled in here the last few weeks starting to hit the ball well uh, that's always good for the tide that's right that one's going to be outside for a ball one one you know mr tommy you know i, I get the, the luxury of actually seeing these kids off the field through in the classroom and down the hallways and uh cooper's man boy i tell you he's, he's top kid. shelf good kid miss olivia and mr uh, ryan done a phenomenal job raising that young man that they have so they will take another ball up high 2-1 they got got pappy and tyler my dad and my my youngest son are listening in if you're listening in let us know 601-590-5950 always love to hear from you that one's going to be down low for a ball 3-1 now to coop see if he gets a pitch here to hit we got a couple of teachers living, um, listening down in that uh, left field lounge over there. Miss Ashley Hayden, got it. Uh, that's my my lovely bride, seventeen years. 17 and uh, years. you got, I think her partner in crime, Miss Jessica Smith, is down there. Hello, ladies. That one's going to be up high to Coop, so he'll take ball four and head down to first. Landon Watts will step in here for the tie. Gerald Wells says he's listening. Hey, Gerald. The batter, the catcher, it's number 15, Porter, Landon Watts. So Landon's got a lot of power. Man, kind of started out really hot this year. Has cooled off slightly for the time. Uh, we'll see if we can get him back hot here. Man, Landon's one of them kids, man. He is just grown. Oh, what he has just grown into that frame. And his, his baseball IQ, as you said, has, has been really good. Sometimes he just... He didn't execute real well. Sometimes he threw the ball around, was never scared to throw it, but had great tools. But this year, really seems to have that under control. He's Like I said, he's always had the, the physical talent. Yeah. Sometimes just made bad choices. Not this year. He's done really, really well. He swings and miss 0-2. I, I got a great story about Landon. So when I coached junior high baseball back in 2020, um, he was in the eighth grade. and uh, Or no, no, it was 20, 2019, excuse me. Or the, the spring of 2020, Landon did not want to play catcher. He's like, Coach, I do not want to play catcher. And I said, all right, that's fine, Landon. What do you want to play? Well, yes, fast forward a couple of years. Strike. So he'll go down swinging. I'll let you finish. He goes, takes the strike on the outside part of the plate. He goes down. That's two outs for the Tide. Brady Robertson will step in here with um, – still got a runner on first. That's Coop. Yeah, it was just a funny story, you know. He, he he wanted he didn't want to play catcher in junior high, and then he's going to college to play be a catcher. You know, it's just it's just funny how the world works. I think he's probably going to end up pitching more than anything. Of what I'm hearing, he's he's been doing a really good job on the mound. So yeah, he's got okay. a lot of talent. He really does. He can probably do either. Brady's going to foul one off. Oh one, but but it is it has been fun to watch him grow. Mm -hmm. You know, he had some big shoes to fill in with Sam Landrum. Oh, vacating yeah. a couple years ago, and Sam had been around for a while. It was, it was a very, you know, calm presence behind the plate, and and so I think yeah. Landon, Landon got kind of caught up in maybe trying to do a little bit too much. Well, and, and but he, he that's just part of growing and maturing, and and what a good job he's done at that. Yeah, he's done a great job, and and, and before Sam, you had Kay Turnage, who was a phenomenal baseball right. player. So um, swinging so a miss, oh two catchers. Catchers have been really, really good here at Picayune. And, and like you said, Landon has really grown in. He's settled into the game. You know, you, you, as a player, and I, I can recall this, and you so you can too, um, 
you, sometimes you feel like you got to press and you got to make right. plays and you just let the game happen and just let it unfold. And uh, things, good things happen when you do that. As you start pressing, that's when that's right. things can happen. Brady pressed a little bit there. He swings and misses. Had a pretty good all-speed pitch. He'll go down. So the Tide, once again, they strand a runner. We're headed to the top of the store, stop of the third. We still have no score. That's what I meant to say. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a speed bump. And if you have cut-rate car insurance, the cost to reattach your muffler could hurt. So switch to Allstate, save money, and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Jason Pigott has offices in Picayune. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pigott Agency a call today, 601-798-7005. Based on coverage and limits selected, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Join the crispy chicken craze with Sonic's all-new crispy tender wraps and hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja. Stop by and enjoy each for only $1.99. Sonic's crispy tender wraps include all white meat, melted shredded cheddar cheese, and lettuce. The hickory barbecue has additional hickory sauce, and the cheesy Baja has an added zesty cheese sauce, and both are wrapped in a warm tortilla. Try one today at Sonic Drive-In on Highway 11 North in Picayune. Go ahead, push that red button for happy eating at its best. We're headed to the third. We got no score here at the Kirk. It's Picking is taking on the Hancock Halts in the second game of the series. Picking won the first game nine to five. The first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picking, where the customer is always first. Go by and see Chantel Thady at the West Canal Branch for all your banking needs. Here's Busby's first pitch. It's going to be inside. Nope, called strike. 0-1 oh, to Gavin Nikes who will lead it off here in the top of the third for the Hawks. Oh, we got one knee case. Got one. Probably going to have another at some point. That one's going to be a good breaking pitch, but going to just miss. So he'll even the count at 1-1. You're right. There's probably going to be another. <laughs> That's like here being in Provo County. You're going to have a Smith somewhere. Or three or six. <laughs> That's in there for a strike. Busby's wheeling and dealing quickly here. Got knee case down one to, and two. DK's hits from the left side. For the Hawks, that one's going to be fouled off. It will remain 1-2. Now, does the advantage go to the hitter when you're facing an opposite pitcher, or is it vice versa when it's the same? So how does that work Well, according out? according to the the book, yeah. right, the book says that, that you have an advantage if you hit opposite of the pitcher because his breaking ball breaks into you. That one's going to be down low for a ball 2-2. Okay. So a left-handed hitter, a right-handed pitcher, right. his breaking pitch will come to you, which is easier to hit yep. than going away from you. So, awesome. So statistically, you yes, have sir. an advantage. That's not always the case. Well, isn't baseball it, it, about numbers, right? It is. It is. That one's going to be a, a good number right there. It's on the inside corner. It'll be strike three, and that will retire Mr. Nikes. It was a good pitch. It was a good pitch. Busby painted the inside corner with a fastball. I wouldn't have hit it with two bats. <laughs> Leadoff hitter now, Jude Ulrich, center fielder, step in here for the Hawks. So he'll hit his second time through. He struck out against Busby in the first. That one's going to be a swing and a foul tip, 0-1 to Ulrich. Now, Mr. Tommy, I know you uh, was once a college baseball player. Do you think you can uh, – Step in that batter's box right now and hit. Just get a piece of Mr. Uh, Busby. Absolutely not. I couldn't hit it with a boat paddle. <laughs> I could not hit it with a boat paddle. <laughs> Come on. Jerry Jerry down there says he would bet on Tommy. Yeah, you yeah, lose that great. money, I can tell you. The way this back feels, I don't know if I could spin it around. Especially what? the way Busby is dealing. He's, he just dealt the wow. breaking pitch there. There's two strikes or two strikeouts very quickly. That's going to bring the pitcher, Brandon Arson, that's going to step in here. Yeah, I don't know that I could do much with Busby. Uh, if he throw me all fastballs, and I may could get a piece of it. But if he threw me a breaking pitch, grub me, I'm out. I'd be done. I'd, I'd spin around in a court. Here's the first pitch to Arsenal. It's going to be outside for a ball, 1-0. Yeah, I just don't know. And, and being my luck, Busby would hit me. Yeah. That would be my, and, I'd, and then you'd be out for a month. Yeah, I'd be out for at least six weeks. I'd be in traction. 
Oh, man. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch to Arsimant. That's going to be grounded to Jamie. Jamie will pick it up, toss it over to first. Morgan will make the catch. And the Hawks will go quietly here in the third. We're heading to the bottom of the third. We still got no score at the Kirk. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Pearl River Community College has been providing a quality education to the people of South Mississippi and beyond for the past 110 years. If you or a family member is an alumnus of this great institution, we invite you to support future PRCC students through the PRCC Foundation Scholarship Program. Honor or memorialize a loved one or identify your support for the college by creating a scholarship through the PRCC Foundation with your tax-deductible financial gift. Call Delana Harris with the PRCC Foundation office at 601 601- 403-1191 and make a financial investment in a young person's future at Pearl River Community College. Tommy Upton and Coach Seth Hayden along with Kevin Vice on the camera. We head to the bottom of the third, still no score. The first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, where hometown means the best service around with four locations in Picayune to serve you. Landon Franklin's going to lead it off for the Tide. He'll take the first pitch and it will hit him on the stomach and he'll head down to first. With a hit by pitch. And if you're going to get hit, that's not a terrible place to get hit right there. Yeah, um, Landon's one of them kids that moved in from Texas. And, uh, well, he was here. And then we were glad to get him back. Kevin Hitchbass said he's listening in. Donald Balch is listening. Uh, it says the girls are down 2-1 in the top of the fifth, girls softball. Jay Stock will step in here. He'll square the bunt, lay it down, but it's going to be foul. He's going to look to try to move Franklin from first over to second after Franklin gets hit by the pitch, grazes him on the stomach, and he'll yeah. head down to first. He was fine. That's just fundamental baseball, right? That's just right. Get, lead off get him over there and, and uh, hand the, the top of the order. The question is, would we – Bunt Kyler if Kyler was in this well, position. Well, yeah, it changes. Stocks is going to square again, get this one down. Good bunt to the third baseman. Third baseman has only one play. He'll throw across the diamond and get Stocks at first, but not before we're able to move Franklin over to second. So yes. we'll flip the lineup over to the top of the order with one out, but Parker's going to come up here with a runner in scoring position. Yeah, that's good fundamental baseball like you want. That's right. You draw it up like that. You get a leadoff runner, you bunt him over a second, then you got your leadoff runner, your leadoff batter. That's exactly right. In the right. box to get a RBI. Jeff Stockstill said he's listening in. Helton's going to step in here. He popped out to the center fielder the first inning. He'll stand in here with Franklin at second. That one's going to be inside for a ball, 1-0. Elton's been on fire, Coach. Yeah. He he started it off um, that first series, first district series. I think he gets past the goal. I think he had uh, eight or nine hits that week. Wow, that's incredible. And he has been on fire ever since. That one's going to be called strike. Looked a little loud. My picky and I cleaning glasses said it was a little bit out. Ah, you know, I I, I, I got to call it. You're looking straight up. It it was outside. It was over in the other batter's box. But, hey. So, there you got an unbiased opinion. But ours doesn't matter. The man in black said it's a strike, so it's 1-1. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be down low. Get away from the catcher. So, that will allow Franklin to get to third. Look at the wheels on the big man, huh? That's right. Runs like a lineman, but that's all you need. Well, hopefully we can get him over there on uh, lined up with that picky maroon tied football jersey on that's next exactly year. He right. looks good in the baseball uniform, so that's right. He like got, to see him in a man of football uniform. That's right. He had a brother that was a pretty good one come through here a few oh, years ago. Oh man, gosh, Garrett was. He played college football. Pretty good one. He looks like he's uh, he's doing well too. So I, I think you're right. Here's the two one. That one's going to be. Excuse me, but. Parker cannot stop his swing, so he'll go 2-2. That was a good breaking pitch that Mm -hmm. just kind of ate Parker up, tried to swing, and then tried to get out of the way. and It was ugly, but it was a strike. Just kind of jammed him up a little bit, a little inside pitch. Right. 2-2 now to Petey. 
That one's going to be lifted out to the shortstop, just a little uh, flare. And Parker's hit two flares, one to center field and one to the shortstop. Didn't didn't get a whole lot of either one of them. He's frustrated. Yeah. He can't just barrel one up, which is what he wanted to do. So with two outs now, Kyler King will step in. Oh, he's got an opportunity. This is what you want, you know, as a senior. You want to be the guy in the spot to, to you know, win the game, have a big hit, have it open up a big inning. That's exactly right. King will hit here. He – he um, fouled out or struck out in the first. Actually, no, he ground. He uh, popped out. Mm. Yeah. He's going to take that one and foul it off. He'll start 0-1. Franklin's down at third. Nobody out. This is the first runner to get the third for either team. We're at the bottom of the third. Todd looking to capitalize here after they scored nine the other night in Hancock. That one's going to be outside for a ball, 1-1. You know, you you get you, you hopefully you set your lineup to where you put your key players in key positions for big matchups and big uh, opportunities in the game. And, and this is one right here, That's you right. know, early in the game. And, and there it is, right there. Connor King's going to rip a breaking pitch out into left field. That'll score Franklin easily. Connor will record his first out of the inning. Tied to go up yeah. one to nothing. So you're right. You set it up perfectly. Look at that's, this. Right? That's it. All we need you to do is put on them tight pants, and you could be a baseball guy. <laughs> Coach, Coach Stockner listening in. He said you're a natural at this. He I said coach, he's going to release you if you need yeah. if he needs him to. It's not a Listen, problem. When I coached baseball that one year, I brought a whistle out here because that's just what I know what to do. You know, hey, you just had people running sprints. Jamie Lumpkin will right. step in for the tie. Kyler King will be down at first. Two outs. Tied leading this one now. one nothing. They're going to be a throw with a first. It'll get away from the first baseman. King's going to round second. And here he's going. He's going to be a play at third. He'll slide in and save. Wow. So See, King, that's just King, great was, King was shifting gears. He never checked up going around second. I didn't look at Coach Evan, but he must have been waving him because Kyler never checked up. That's, he slid in, and that's just that's being aggressive. That's look, making your mind up when you take off from first that you're going to get to third. Yeah, and that's what he did. So that's one problem. One of them plays as a coach, you're like, man, no, 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 no. But yeah, come on, hey, come on, come it's on, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything because you made the play. And that's then, right. We tell our kids that all the time. Coach Nicholson, I bet, does the same thing. When you make a play, hey, you make a play. That's right. That one's going to be in there for a strike to Jamie. Oh one to the tied second baseman. King's down at third. Tied has scored one here in the inning. Got a couple of hits so far in the game and have one error to show for it, too. Here's the one. Jamie's going to lift that one out into right, but I believe it's going to be right at the center fielder, and it is. So the tide get a little traffic. They do score one, but that's all they're able to do. They'll strand one down at third. We'll head to the top of the fourth. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jamison Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally and improves movements for any activity, whether small motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. Tommy Upton along with Coach Seth Hayden as we're just having some fun announcing the ball game. Appreciate you hanging out with us here at the Kirk on a beautiful Friday night. Tide leads this one one to nothing. We're heading into the top of the fourth. We'll remind you of the fifth, middle of the fifth. We'll have the Paul's Pastry Shop Mardi Gras Cafe trivia question. We'll also let Coach uh, Smith or Coach Seth, I'm sorry, weigh in on a Sonic player of the game at the conclusion of the game. We also yes, want to remind you that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, F&B Picayune, checking savings, loans, mortgages. If you need it, they've got it. F&B Picayune, your hometown bank. Man, I got to tell you, this is a gorgeous night, and, and we're not the only ones in the greens because there's a lot of Todd fans that uh, have shown up tonight. That's exactly right. All right, Busby's first pitch is going to be in there for a ball. I thought it was going to be a strike, but no. And I believe this is Hopgood hitting again. It is. Yes, sir. Third baseman for Hancock. 
I believe Mr. Jeffrey Hopgood is uh, also going to be going to play college football. He's going to hit one on the ground to King. King will pick it up, throw across the diamond, and Kraft cannot reach and get it. This That throw didn't look good all the way around. King looked like he just didn't have a good handle on the ball, so we'll have to score that one an E6 yeah. on Kyler. It was not a, a ball that was hit very hard. King had plenty of time. Hopgood doesn't run that well. He's a big guy. And uh, just, just threw it away. C- coach, sometimes it happens. So it we're going to run on first here. Nobody out. Yeah, that's one of them things, man. A stationary target, you wouldn't think it would be that hard to do, but sometimes it is. Uh, it's like the game of golf. You know, how hard is it to hit a stationary ball? But It's a lot harder than it looks. It's a lot harder than it looks. I, I've never fielded a ground ball at shortstop and threw it across the diamond for an out. So, um I just know that he's a tremendous athlete, and you should be able to get it done. But That's exactly hey, right. We all make mistakes. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Jason, uh, Jackson Knight will step in now for Hancock, their leading hitter, and he'll take a ball down low to start off. Hopgood's at first. Nobody out. Tide leads this one one to nothing here in the top of the fourth. Going to be inside for a ball 2-0. Let's go, Tanner. Corey Dorn's listening in. Coach Tyler Penton's listening in. Oh, Coach Tyler Penton. We're glad to get him. Um, he's going to be helping coach varsity football next year. There you go. Good guy. I almost called him a good kid because I coached <laughs> him when he was nine years well, old. So Baseball, nine years my old. First so I still year think at, of him, but he's not. My first year at picking was his senior year. So I, I'm now coaching kids he's, that I've actually. That's right. He was a good athlete coming up, and then it looks like he's turned into a good coach, too. So you're right. Glad to have him. Knight is going to foul that one up are they going to call catcher's interference i don't know what happened on that knight looked like his his uh leg kind of went out from under him it sounded like it was catcher's interference but no call by the umpire the ball was foul popped up so it'll be a strike three one knight went down on one knee i don't know if he just twisted something or just yeah that was all something was uncomfortable yeah we it, it didn't sound sound like a thud that's right. like it would have been came off of the catcher's I, mitt but that's exactly right so three one pitch is going to be in there for a strike no that that was strike two somehow i missed a strike on there so there was already two strikes and knight's going to go down looking on a beautiful breaking pitch doesn't get much better than that and that's going to draw a visit by Coach Evan as he'll go out and talk to his right-hander. That'll give us a chance to, to kind of reset. And, Coach, I think the, the uh, touchdown club's got an event going on tomorrow. Is that right? Oh, yes, sir. Um, so tomorrow at Millbrook Country Club at 1 o'clock, uh, the Maroon Tide Touchdown Club is putting on a golf scramble to benefit the football team. And, and that's not just varsity. That's the ninth graders. That's junior high. That's everybody that's associated with cheer associated with the Maroon Tide Touchdown Club. It's at 1 o'clock at Millbrook. It's $200 per team for four-man scramble. Um, we'll get to feed you and all that kind of good stuff, and uh, we'll have some raffles. Um, winning team gets four rounds to Diamond Head Golf, Golf and Country Club. There you go. So don't be late. Hunter Coon's going to step in now. Everybody a reset. Hopgood's still down at first. One out. Tide leads it one nothing. First pitch to Coon's going to be outside for a ball. 1-0. As you said, beautiful night at the Kirk. Got a nice crowd. Most oh, yeah. of most of the reserve seats are filled. A lot of the general admission up top is filled up. Hancock's brought a good crowd from down Texas flat. That one's going to be hit on the ground to Cooper. He'll flip it over to second. Great He'll job. He'll flip it over to first, and we will turn the double play. That's a good job there by Cooper and by Jamie as they get – a double play. You can score at 5-4-3. Five, four, three. Yes, sir. And that doesn't get much better than that. We love when innings end like that. If you're the good guys in white, you're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Pit Lane Oil Change in Picayune is your personal pit crew. When you need an oil change, take it to the professionals who will make sure your oil change is done right with quality oils from Pennzoil, Castrol, Mobile One, and Rotella by Shell. At Pit Lane Oil Change, it's not just an oil change. We inspect under the hood to make sure all your fluid levels are where they should be and those belts are in good working order. Our Pit Lane crew ensures those air filters are not clogged up and hurting your engine's performance. We will also vacuum the inside of your vehicle. At Pit Lane Oil Change, our crew also inspects your wipers, all your bulbs to make sure those brake lights and turn lights are working correctly. And we put all your tires at the right pressure. Why just get an oil change when your vehicle can get the pampered professional service that only the Pit Lane Oil Change crew can deliver? We're at 401 Highway 11 North, just three blocks north of East Canal, right by the railroad tracks. No need for an appointment, but if you are on a schedule, call us at 601-798-0017. 
Pit Lane Oil Change, your personal pit crew. We're back here at the Kirk as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Tide leads this one one to nothing. Morgan Craft's going to step in first for the Maroon Tide. And the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune. Check and savings loans, mortgages. If you need it, they've got it. FNB Picayune, your hometown bank. Craft swung in a 3 0 pitch last time and lifted it out into right field. And he's hopefully he's angry. Coach, oh, yeah. he'll make up for it here. He's going to take the first pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Yeah, you know, he, like like we said, we he he flied out on a 3-0, so um, maybe he's going to be more selective with his pitches and uh, what he swings at. But uh, great hitter, so I think he's going to really try to work this pitcher right here. He does on that pitch. It evens the count at 1-1. Now does Kraft. Mr. Tom. If you do get a chance to a watch nice a varsity seats. game down there, nice man, seats. that is yeah. that is some fine seating. I, I won't watch a game unless I'm up here. I won't go anywhere else to watch a game. I gotta sit down there. So, very nice, good job there by the folks. That was gonna be hit on the ground at the shortstop. Shortstop's gonna pick it up, throw over to first, and they will retire Morgan. He hit that ball pretty well, but right at the shortstop, who made a good play. That is Chase Brown, I believe. Yeah, it was hit oh, real. It was yeah, hit it was. on a button, just almost just right at him. That's right. Number seven, Cooper Moreau will step in now for the tie. Third baseman. Cooper was part of that double play last inning, or top of this. He inning. started it off. That's exactly right, and uh, he walked last time up for the tie. He's gonna take a first pitch up high for a ball. You know, Cooper's one of those kids we always try to get to play football. Man, Cooper, you know, hey, you know, come try it out, come try it out. And, you know, baseball is his, his true love, and he loves playing it, and he does a phenomenal job at it, man. He's really good. He's a good ball player. He certainly is. Comes from a pretty good bloodline of ball players. That one's going to be down low for a ball, 2-0 now to Coop. We've been graced with some celebrities. Man, we got the royalty up here. That one's going to be fouled off, 2-1. Superintendent Dean Shaw has entered the neighborhood. So Coop will step in now, 2 1, one out, nobody on. Todd leads this one, four, I'm sorry, one to nothing in the fourth. Fouled off there by Coop, so even to count 2 2. Yeah, it's always good when your superintendent was a long, lifelong coach, you know. He has your back on I a lot of I still call him coach because when I was in school, he was the basketball coach. So yeah. I, I still, to this day, That's when what I, I see him, I say, hey, coach, how are you? So, yeah, coach. I have a lot of respect for That's, Coach I, Shaw. I do the same thing with Coach Mitchell. You know, there you go. She's our principal. Yeah. Caught by the left fielder. I thought that was going to get away from him. Cooper kind of inside out at it, had a little bit of a slice on it. Left fielder goes to his right towards the left field line and uh, – Kind of made it look a little. Now step in. Thought maybe that was going to get down. We were going to be off to the races. Yeah, that would have been nice, but I keep saying it, man. You know, they practice It'll They practice to, baseball oh, too. But Watts is going to take that one off the shoulder. Or was that off his head? I believe it was off his he has, That's you know, right. they do a good job of the weight room, uh, Coach Nicholson. That's right. Getting them boys big and strong. That's right. So Watts will go down to first. Number nine, Brunson Stockstall is going to come in and courtesy run for Landon as he gets hit by the pitch. Brady Robinson will step in. He was a starting pitcher Tuesday night. Yeah, Brady's a relative of mine, man. He's. And Stockstall's going to go. Nobody's covering the bag, but shortstop gets there. But last or, or late, but uh, no chance of getting Stockstall. He got a good jump, yeah, and swiped that one easily. So he'll stand at second now. You know, Brunson, one of the phenomenal athletes that we have at Picking, and he's a he could be a three sport athlete in the in the big three. That's football, basketball, baseball. He right. chooses not to play football, but uh, I mean, just oh, gosh, just. Uh, extraordinary athlete that's right that one's going to be down low now to brady so so one one to b rob 
He's looking to get going here. He's in week two of his post-injury recovery. He's starting to play the field, kind of do everything. He's pitched two different times, been on the pitch count both times. He'll swing and foul that one off, one, two. I think he's still a little ginger on that, that leg. You know, sometimes, we, and we've talked about it a little bit on the air, that oftentimes it's it's more in your head than anything else. Exactly. You know, it's not that it's you hurting, know, but you still you still favor it. Being being a former athlete and, and, and experiencing injury, you always, it's in the back of your mind, man. That's Because right. you got so much riding on athletics. That's exactly right. And you're like, man, I just, you know, don't want to kind of a little timid, maybe a little gun shy. That's but, right. um, yeah, you do got to get it out of your head mainly. And I think that's starting to come around. Pitching started to look pretty good. He's not in midseason form, but he's getting there. And what we're hoping for is we can get him ready for the playoffs. He'll hit that one on the ground to the second baseman. The second baseman will flip over to first and record the third out. So Todd, get another base runner and get him into scoring position. And it's springtime. Make that short drive to Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaw's has a nice selection of new and used trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Please go to our website, pawpawsniceprice.com, and see multiple pictures of our entire inventory. Pawpaw's Campers, having fun, selling fun. Dr. Lori Blackmer and Dr. Mark Hutto at Picayune Eye Clinic are experienced optometrists who are passionate about your vision care. Picayune Eye Clinic will cater to all of your vision needs, answer any eye care questions you may have, and supply you with the most up-to-date optometric information and fashion eyewear and frames in order to keep your eyes clear and healthy. They've been providing complete eye care for over 30 years. The clinic is at 908 6th Avenue in Picayune. Give Picayune Eye Clinic a call today at 601-798-4182 and begin to see things more clearly. We're back here at the Kirk. We're headed to the bottom of the fourth. Picky leads this one. Baseball game so far. Matthew Cuevas is going to lead off for Hancock. He sacked Bunny. It's brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune. Come by the main branch and see one of our friendly loan officers, Keith Robinson, Judy Lowry, Aldrich Spears, David Levy, Christina Ladin, Colin Thompson, hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. That one's going to be in there for a strike. 1-1 one, one now to Cuevas. Hancock Faithful did not like that call. But it looked to be in there for a strike. That one's going to be in there for a strike. 1-2. Fastball hit the outside part of the plate there. And Busby still seems to be dealing here in the, four, in the fifth. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think Tanner can go all seven innings and uh, hopefully – he doesn't have to, but we got him if he needs to. That one's going to be fouled off down the right field line. Only 59 pitches so far. 41 of those have been strikes for Busby. So he's been efficient, only giving up one hit against this Hawk lineup. So you feel that you don't need a whole lot of runs with Busby on the mound. He usually has pretty good control, has pretty good uh, stuff, and he's, he has it again tonight. There's another foul off, so the count will remain 1-2 to Cuevas. Mr. Tommy, you going to be playing in the Maroon Tide Touchdown Club golf tournament tomorrow? I am not. I'm going to be heading out of town. That one's going to be down low for a ball. Headed to Kentucky for a week. Okay. To chase the wild turkey. Oh, wow. That's my favorite time of the year to go turkey hunting. And so I've got a trip to head out there. Yeah. Be gone all week, hunting in a couple places. I can't wait. That one's going to be fouled off again by Cuevas. So the count will remain 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite time of the year, these beautiful spring days. Hear turkey goblin and yep. shoot them right in the face. That's what I enjoy doing, <laughs> just shoot them right in the face. I've never been turkey hunting. Yeah, well, don't go because yeah. we don't need any more turkey hunters. Nah, that's, that one's that's gonna okay. Be up, I'd rather just eat them, eat them sliced on sandwiches <laughs> there you go. for Thanksgiving. There you go. 3-2 now to Quavis. That one's going to be up high for a ball. No, nobody out here in the top of the fifth. We'll have a Paul's Pastry Shop Mardi Gras Cafe trivia question. Next half inning. That one's going to be hit on the ground to Kyler. Kyler will pick it up, make a strong throw across the diamond. Morgan will make the stretch. And we will retire the first out of the inning. And I'll be honest, that is an exchange we've struggled with this year is that 6-3. We've either not been able to corral it or make some errant throws. And for three years, that's been a pretty solid connection. We've just struggled with it this year. And and I'm glad to see us get one. Well, you know, you got two seniors um, at Kyler King and Morgan Craft. And, 
you know, they, they've been together for a long time, and they should be able to should be able to, to make that throw. That's right. I think the umpire just took a – Was that one right off the face? Right off the uh, noggin, uh, That man. was a, uh, a pitch up for a ball, and, and Watt's got a hand up, but it kind of kicked <laughs> off his hand and hit right off the face mask or the top of the head. I couldn't tell. Of the umpire, he seems to be okay. Yeah. He's back down there for another ball there, 2-0. Now to land in shields for the Hawks. Yeah. I think it hit him in the face mask, but he seems to be okay. He does swing, the umpire says. 2-1. Tried to check it. Yep. They got some smoke brewing over there on the left field lounge. I wonder what they got cooking uh, on the grill. Kirk's corner down there. I'm sure he's cooking literally. I see the smoke boiling up. You're right. That one's going to be lifted out into left field. Stockstall's going to move over to his left a few steps. And he will record the second out of the inning. So two, two outs now here for the Hawks in the top of the fifth. Number 20. Chase. Chase Brown's going to step in. Brown's 0 for 1 on the night with a strikeout so far. Hmm. DKs will be on deck for the Hawks if we get there. That first pitch is up high for a ball, 1-0. How many pitches, uh, what, Tanner? Busby is at 69. 69 pitches. That one's going to be hit out into right field. B-Rob's going to come in and Great make the play. Great play by Brady. Make the Great play. job. Brady looked Brady. to be okay on that leg there as he dives. And that's just the confidence you probably need. Hey, yes. I can I can make those plays. That's exactly right. So he looks great out there as he records the third out of the inning. We're headed to the bottom of the fifth. That's Paul's Pastry of Shop trivia question time. We'll do that after one word from our sponsors you're listening to maroon tide baseball locally owned and operated first place express car wash and picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers both locations highway 11 north just past coast electric and on highway 43 south just a quarter mile east of i-59 at now have new hours 7 30 a.m to 7 p.m and 9 a.m to 5 p.m on sundays at the highway 43 location get the early bird special monday through thursday remember when it comes to your vehicle shine first place express car wash and picayune will have you saying if it doesn't shine it ain't mine tommy upton along with coach seth hayden here in the middle of the fifth we head to the bottom of the fifth at the kirk where the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, right, F&B Picayune, hometown community spirit, oh, hometown yes. community pride. Here is the Paul's Pastry Shop trivia question, Mardi Gras Cafe oh, trivia question. Goes. Here are your instructions. You need to text your name and your answer to 601-590-5950. Right, 601 590 5950 we got Sweet Caroline going on in the background. The crowd is singing. Here's your this question. Is- it's just a beautiful night. This is night. great, man. What pitcher threw 14 consecutive scoreless innings in all-star competition? What pitcher threw 14 consecutive scoreless innings in all-star right, competition? Tell me his name and the years that it happened. What pitcher threw 14 consecutive scoreless innings in all-star competition? 601-590-59. 50. Landon Franklin's going to lead it off for the Tide here in the bottom of the fifth, and he'll take the first pitch in there for a strike, 0-1. What pitcher threw 14 consecutive scoreless innings in all-star competition? Tell me who it was in the years. Man, that's, You're gonna win. that's tough. Gift certificate to Paul's Pastry Shop, Mardi Gras Cafe. That ball is down low, 1-1 now to Frank, designated hitter for the Tide. That's a tough question. That is a tough question. Did it happen before I was born? Yes, it did. <laughs> okay. You can't start giving too many, too many uh, <laughs> warnings here. That's going to be two on the Frank, but yeah, or helps. Yeah, but but yes, I'll give you that. It happened before you were born. But Frank's ahead in the count, 2-1. Here's the pitch from Arsenal. That's going to be down low for a ball 3-1 now to the designated hitter. So this is that, that hitter's count that you're looking for, that 3-1. Yeah, Man, you, you got to come ball, in. That. Yeah. Come out of your shoes and go get it. Yes, sir. Let's see what Frank does here is if he gets a good fastball to hit. There it he is. does, and that's going to be lifted uh, out in the center. It may be trouble. And there it, it is. is. It gets down, baby. It is. Great it falls job. in front of the center fielder and out of the reach of the second baseman who was headed out there to try to 
second time tonight as he scored the only run of the game for the Tide, and he gets his first hit of the night. Well, you know, textbook baseball, you get 3-1 count. You're looking for that fastball, and you just want to jump on it. That's exactly right. Dustin Stockstill will step in now for the Tide, left fielder. He uh, sack bunted last time. He's going to square again and try it again, and Franklin's going to get almost caught off at first as Jay Stock bunted through the ball, missed it. Catcher slings it down to first. Yeah, that's and, uh, uh, almost got Franklin. Yeah, I got a was... bunch of people texting in. That was that may, must have been too easy. I just got answer after answer coming here. I got to look and see who was first or who was winning. So here's the 0 1 to J Stock. That's going to be oh, a strike. Man. That's tough right here. What do 0-2. you do with uh, Coach Stock? I mean, Coach Stock, here I go back in football. As Coach Nicholson, you're trying to advance the runner, but you're 0 2 on the count. Do you still try to bunt? I don't. If it's me, if you're asking, no. We'll see what he what he does. Stockstill does not. He's going to take a pitch outside. It's just a little bit too dangerous. Yeah. But how much bit. faith do you have that's in right. your hitter to, exactly to lay right. one down? I mean, that's. And Justin has pretty good control over the bat. So right now, what you do is you hope Justin can put something on the ground and not hit into a double play. That's his, that's his job now is hitting something on the left side. Uh-huh. He's going to hit it through the hole on the right side. So there what do I know is he takes a pitch down, drives it past the first baseman, and out into right field for a single. So, Jay Stock, he was the Sonic player of the game Tuesday night. And he's vying again as he's already scored a run. And now he's singled. Yep. Got runners at first and second. Petey's up. Parker Helton. Uh, Parker Helton. Step in with two guys on. Tide leads this one one to nothing here in the bottom of the fifth. This is a great opportunity for the Tide to really blow up in this inning. Big hole out in right center field. If Petey could get something out there, he can run for a while. First baseman creeping in. Petey's going to put it down towards the third baseman. Pitcher's going to pick it up. He spins to try to throw it to third and could not, and then lost his footing. He goes down. So that'll be an infield single, a bunt single, as Petey squared around and was really trying to bunt for a base hit, a good bunt. Bunts it between in a no man's land in between the pitcher's mound, third base, and the foul line. Got the pitcher over there. He tried to get greedy, throw it to third, then made decided not to do that to spin around the throw to first. Right. And lost his footing. And that'll bring Kyler King up, and we got the bases bases full of tidesmen here and nobody out. Tide threatening. Infield's going to come in, come running in. That's going to be outside for a ball, 1-0. And I'd be careful about running in on the grass with Kyler King because he can knock your hat off with a line drive. He does not appear to be bunting, but I know they're trying to minimize runs here. That one's going to be outside for a ball, 2-0. But if he gets a fastball, he can eat you up at third base or shortstop as shallow as they're playing. I know it's cliche, and we keep saying it, or I keep saying it, but this, you know, you're a senior. This is your senior year. This is who you you wanted to play. This is what you want. You dream about these these moments right here. That's right. I think I have a winner. I'll look in a second. We got some action going on. I can't look. That's going to be outside 3 0. I think I saw a winner. People text in, so I, I must have made it too easy. I thought it was a little harder than it was. It was hard for me, Mr. Tommy. <laughs> Mr. Tommy, how many outs, I mean, uh, hits do you have for the Tide? Tide, I have five hits. Okay. Outside, and I That's think they're pitching, pitching around. That was a. You hate to say they're pitching around King with the bases loaded, but I really think they were pitching around him not giving him anything to hit. But the problem is it doesn't get a whole lot easier now where you got Lumpkin and Kraft coming up. Still bases loaded, yep. nobody out. And, and guess what? Another senior. That's and right. And then after him, another senior. That's, so exactly, that's is, exactly right. This is the gauntlet that you got to run if you're an opposing pitcher. And that's going to draw a walk by the Hancock um, coach. And as he comes out to talk to his pitcher, we'll step away. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. At Sonic Drive-In of Picayune, Tuesday after 5 p.m. till close is family night with half-off cheeseburgers. Sonic Drive knows how hard it is sometimes to feed your whole family, and we want to give you a break on Tuesday nights. Half-price cheeseburgers. It's how Sonic Drive-In helps you feed your family. Remember that Sonic Drive-In of Picayune on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North, is happy eating at its best. Tuesday's family night with half-price cheeseburgers. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Picayune. We do have a winner, and that winner is Miss Kayla Stillman. Miss Kayla Stillman, Juan Maricol, 
is the right answer. Mardi, uh, Mardi Gras Cafe, Paul's Pastry Shop Tribute Club, which Major League pitcher had through 14 consecutive scoreless innings. Give me the, the name and the years. Juan Marichal, 1964 to 71 was the answer. I'll tell you more about him in just a second. Jamie Lumpkin's going to step in. There was no pitching change, just a visit by the Hawks. Wow. Jamie's going to hit that one into right, right center, center field. field. That's it's trouble. Gonna That's going to get down. One run will score. Here comes two runs. Kyler's going to round third. Nope, he's going to go back. I thought he was going to try it. As Jamie's going to slide into second with a double. As he hits a fastball out into the power alley in right center field. So he'll stand in there with a double. Tied now up 4 nothing. Still cooking here with runners at second, third. Morgan Kraft up for the tie. Hey, Todd, they, they, they've been threatening all game. Um, and then finally we got an opportunity. Um, started with Franklin, drawing the walk. Well, he got hit by pitch, didn't he? That's right. And then, um, oh, so, no, Franklin got a hit this time. That hit by pitch was the first time up, so he gets a hit this time. Mm -hmm. That one's going to be in there for a strike to Kraft. So, yeah, Kraft is – 0 for 2 on the night. He's looking to get his first hit here. This will be a big spot with two runners on in scoring position. In scoring position, yes. That one's going to be down low for a ball. 1-1 one, one to the big first baseman. Kyler King's at third. Jamie Lumpkin's at second after a double. Scored two runs on that double. Brandon Arsament still in there for the Hawks. Do you have a pitch count on um, Hancock's pitcher? He, he is. He has pitched uh, 72 pitches so far, 44 72. strikes. Still got nobody out here at the bottom of the fifth. That one's going to be way up high, 2-1. King looking for any reason to come home. Mm -hmm. He's just bouncing around down there at third. Oh, yeah. You want aggressive base runners, but, you know, you don't. With, with no outs, you don't want to be reckless. That's you right. don't want to be reckless and just going on anything. That's exactly right. So he's being careful, but he's being aggressive. And it's all Kraft's going to hit that one right at the shortstop. He eats him up. And so that'll be an E6, but well, that was a ball that was hit hard. Hit right at him. Should have made the play, but tried to start the throw before he had the ball. So Morgan will drive in a run as he reaches on an air, and he'll move Jamie over to third. So it'll be 5 to nothing now tied. Runners at first and third, so how quickly things can change, Kosethis. Came into yep. this game, into this inning, one to nothing game. Tied has scored four here, still nobody out. That's right. Runners at first and third are going to have a pinch runner for Morgan. Ian Heron's going to step in now. You can do that in baseball one time. You can have a pinch runner, and then Kraft can re enter one yep. time. He, he comes out the second time, he's out for the game. Uh, could you imagine if that, that rules in football? That'd be a <laughs> be nasty, wouldn't it? That would be nasty. Cooper Moreau's going to step in here. Runners at first. Tied looking to add to the lead. They're already up 4 nothing here in the second game of the series. Swing and a miss at a 67-mile-an-hour breaking pitch. Cooper, Probably just expecting fastball right there, Cooper huh? got fooled on that one. Arsenal doesn't throw very hard. But the, the fastball's low 80s, high 70s, and the breaking pitch is in the mid-60s. So he's a crafty right-hander, they would say. It's going to be 79 down for a ball, 2-0. I'm sorry, 1-1, not 2-0, 1-1. Oh, excuse me. My scoreboard operator had it wrong, and I went with him. Shameful. Yeah. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Coop. Runners at first and third. Tied leads at 4-0. That one's going to be in there for a strike, 69 miles an hour. 1-2 now to the tied third baseman. Todd had really uh, opened it up this inning. Hopefully we can just keep pouring it on. I would take that. Coop's going to step back in here, one, two. He's going to hit that one to the second baseman. Second baseman's going to pick it up, flip over to first. He will record the first out of the inning on the fielder's choice, but he will also drive in a run. And move a runner over to second. So we'll have one out, runner at second. Six nothing now, Todd. Landon Watts will step in. Yeah, but that's what you want. You want to move the runner over. You want to uh, get an RBI. So I mean, well, what you want you is him to hit one up there around <laughs> the the VFW. But we'll take you know one run here. You can't be greedy all the time. <laughs> the American Legion, I should say. Landon Watts will step in now. That's like saying I'd like love for teams not to get 
they have negative yards on offense and we score every time we touch the football. It's you know? not always possible. <laughs> Sometimes it happens, but not, not always possible. 1 0 to Watts. Got a runner on second, one out. Tide leads at 6 0 here. They've scored five in this inning so far. That one's outside for a ball. 2 0 to the Tide right handed catcher. Watts is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Oh, he's due for one right here. That one's going to be down low. It's going to get underneath the catcher. So Heron's going to scoot down to third. All right, so you got one out. You got three balls, no strikes. What do you do? Do you give him the green light, or you just at least see one more? I don't. If I'm the coach, I don't. Yeah. That's just my opinion. It's been a little while here. I think we'll walk him. So I think at this point we try to put some more pressure on him, get another base runner. You get 3-1, you turn him loose. Watts oh, has the green light. He swings at ball four, pops it up down the right field line, but it's foul. First baseman is going to make the play, and uh, Ian Herring is going to get thrown wow, out at the plate. Play. So a double play. Ball was hit uh, not far past the first baseman. First baseman makes a good play going into foul territory, makes the out. Then Herring is going to try to score from third. He gets thrown out by about 10 feet. So the Tide scores six, but they run themselves out of an inning there with a double play, foul out, 3-2 yeah, put out. You don't see that very often. We're heading to the top of the six. Tide leads this one six to nothing. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm thick-cut bacon sizzling on your stove. And while you were over there smearing your bagel, this little piggy went on a splatter spree. And if you don't have the right home insurance coverage, you'll be crying wee, wee, wee over this fire in your home. So get all state. Jason Pigott has offices in Picayune. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pigott Agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Vehicle and Property Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. We're headed to the top of the six. Tide leads it six to nothing after they score five in that inning. But coach kind of ran themselves out of an inning. What might have been an even bigger, or as my grandpa used to say, a worster inning. You just never know. But we will not know as we get pop out, thrown out at the plate. Gavin Nikes is going to lead it off for Hancock, where the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picky, hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. The first pitch to Nikes is going to be a ball, 1 0. You got me? Yeah. That one's going to be lifted out into left field foul. Justin's going to give it a run but can't quite get there so it'll be a long strike one one now to knee case got quite a few answers in the pulse pastry shop trivia question answer let me let me go through some of those answers got several right answers tyler pinton gave me the right answer donnie keller gave me the right answer uh, let's see did anybody else give me the right answer Corey dorn gave me the right answer but so who was the pitcher? Uh, um, Juan Marischal. That one's going to be in there for a strike. One, two. Juan Marischal was the guy. Kayla Stillman is the winner. Kayla Stillman. I'm going oh, to that, assume I, is that Coach Stillman. I would. Wife? I would imagine. That's who I'm I wonder going if to Coach Stillman gave her the fed or the answer. We got a little strategy going on. That's a foul yeah. ball. One, two to Clavis. So anyway, they they are uh, legit, and I'll tell you what they get. They get a um, – go by the radio station, Kayla, and you can get a $10 gift certificate to Paul's Pastry Shop, Mardi Gras Cafe. And what you do is you take that gift certificate up to Paul's Pastry, strike three to Quavis. That's going to be inside corner and Just eight nasty. him up for the first out of the inning. 
Just and that's going to bring up the leadoff hitter, Jude Yorit. So, Kayla, you go by, get your certificate, go to Paul's Pastry Shop. They'll give you a box. You tell them to put as many butter crunches in that box. as that pedophores. And, and pedophores. No, no pedophores. Oh, I love no pedophores. No pedophores. Well, for you, we'll, we'll have one pedophore and the rest all butter crunches. It's going to be a swing and a foul strike 0-1 to Yulrich. So, yeah, you fill that up and you bring up that to us either tomorrow or next week, whatever. And that is your offering to the radio and the TV crew. Oh, yes. And we appreciate that. So, so my dad won a few weeks ago, and he actually fulfilled his duty. Wow. Had my wife go pick up the certificate, pick up the um, – Butter crunches and bring them to my house this afternoon. So, so me and old Pappy, we on good speaking terms today. Sometimes man, you're not on good speaking terms with your dad, oh, but man. today we are. That's, that's good stuff. That's man. good stuff. You know, you want it and, I, and, and donated it up. So, uh, it's going to be a swing and a miss for strike three. And, and we're talking about butter crunch, and Busby is just dealing strikes. He's dealing, man. I, you know, speaking of butter crunches, I, I don't think I've ever had anything bad at Paul's Pastry, but I tell you, them pedophores, I could eat my weight. Come on now. And almond pedophores. Oh, my goodness. They're so Come good. On. Jeffrey Hopgood. No, no, I'm sorry. Brandon Arsman, the pitcher, is going to step in now for Hancock. He's going to take the first pitch inside for a ball. 1-0. Let's see. Kayla said yes, she is. Coach Stillman's wife. And that we will have to fight, bare-knuckle fight, her two-year-old for those butter crunches. <laughs> so, that's okay. We're not going to fight that two-year-old. You give that baby the butter crunches. Yeah, you feed them right at uh, about 9 o'clock, 8.30, just <laughs> like this. And uh, that's right. <laughs> you see how much fun you that's have. That's right. Oh, a one and one, one and two. Now, Busby's just dealing. We can't even talk about butter crunches because he is just filling the zone well, up with strikes. I think that's the thing that we got to do. We got to talk about butter crunches. Well, I, I think Busby it's important did. to talk about butter crunches, but but Busby is dealing strikes. That's finally he throws the ball in there. Two two, to the Hancock pitcher. Tide leads this one six to nothing here in the top of the six. They've got six hits, scored six runs. Two walks and two strikeouts. That one just missed. Just missed off the outside part of the plate, or that would have been strike three to Arsenault. Jeffrey Hopgood is on deck if we get there for the Hawks. And we won't That's have two guys. Yeah, that one won't get there. That is a fastball on the inside part of the plate. And Mr. Busby is dealing here at the Kirk. We're headed to the bottom of the six. Tide leads it six to nothing. Here we go, zero, two. Welcome to the river, where education meets excellence. Join the Wildcat family and dive into our lively campus. Make friends, join clubs, get involved, and create memories. Experience academic excellence with our dedicated faculty. Explore cutting-edge facilities designed for your success. Choose PRCC for an education that shapes your future. Pearl River, where you can roar with champions. Get back in the game with Dodd Therapy Center. Jamison Dodd has the specialties and experience to get your athlete back in the game, including indoor turf, hivamat, blood flow restriction, trigger point dry needling, and much more. Dr. Dodd and Dodd Therapy Center is also specializing in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call at 769-242-2636 or visit us at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune and get back in the game. The Kirk is a rockin'. You're back here, Tommy Upton and Coach Seth Hayden as we just gave away a wad of cash and split the pot 50-50. And we also gave away a bucket of butter crunches. I Thanks wish you to would, Paul's Pastry Shop, yeah. Mardi Gras Cafe, and I to wish uh, Coach wife. I wish all them butter crunches and that cash would get donated to the Hayden Foundation. That would be nice <laughs> to go right home and work on the light bill, right? Is that, <laughs> that, is that exactly. what the foundation is going to do? I'm with uh, you. Yeah. So we're heading into the bottom of the six. We got a new pitcher. I'll get you his number here. Is that G Gavin Nikes? Is that, that number is two? number two? Gavin Nikes will come in for the Hawks. I'll close the book. Um, on our cement here, I want to remind you that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picking, where they always put you first. Stop by the South Branch and see Miss Tracy Acker on Memorial Boulevard for all your banking needs. Brady Robinson is going to lead this one off for the Tide, so I'll give you some numbers on our cement as we can close it out. He went five innings, gave up six hits, six runs, five of them were earned, struck out two and walked two. Not a terrible night, 82 pitches, but. Uh, Todd got some timely hitting and took advantage of a couple of errors and mistakes, and they racked up five in that fifth. 
Jackson. And that will chase Arsenal out and bring on the left-hander, Gavin Nikase, for the Hawks. He'll face another left-hander, Brady Robertson, here to lead off the six. That one's going to hit Brady on the elbow. Right there. Yep. And he'll head down to first for the hit by pitch. Landon Franklin will step in, the designated hitter. Landon's one for two on the night. Scored a run. Sorry, he's one for uh, one and scored two runs. Let me correct myself. One for one and scored two runs. You're going to get a courtesy runner or, no, I'm sorry, a pinch runner, number nine, Brunson Stockstill. Pinch pinch runner for B-Rob. That is number nine. Yeah, that's that's Brunson Stockstill again. He ran for Morgan. Now he's running for B-Rob. So he'll stand out at first. Franklin will step in here. He's one for one, scored two runs for the Tide. That was going to be up high for a ball. 1-0 to Frank. 68 miles an hour. So, again, not overpowering here. Was that a strike? Hawks. That was a ball up high. Ball? Okay, uh, time of wire. i got a little time. I'd like to give a shout-out to our head football coach, Coach Cody Stogner. Today's his birthday. Today's his birthday. Well, he yeah. Needs, somebody needs to bring him some butter crunches. Well, he, you can't. You'd have to bring him to Florida. He Uh-oh. went down to Florida for his birthday. Oh, so. man. Well, he abandoned Pearl River County. Okay. I say Florida, Gulf Shores, Alabama. Okay. Well, that's close enough. Well, at least he's listening in because he texted a while ago. At least he was. So, happy birthday, Coach. That yeah. was going to be an air for strike. 1-1. One, one. <laughs> <He's>, he, <laughs> he said, we, uh, Jerry, that was a good Jerry one Grubb said, we're not going to tell how old he is, but it rhymes with Morty. That's what, <laughs> that's what Jerry said. So, we'll let you figure that out. 1-1 one, one to Frank. That one's going to be inside. Frank tried to get him to hit off the buttocks, but it just quite, couldn't quite get there, so it'll be a ball. 2-1. Now, Brunson not able to get down to second, so he'll still be at first. So we've got a little time. I'd like to also uh, tell about you know what we got going on in football. Um, right. Our ninth grade football team will be playing a spring game on April 25th okay. against Diaberville. Frank's going to lift that one out into right field. That might be trouble. It's going to get down in front of the right fielder. So that'll be the second. Frank, he'll now be two for two. Scored a couple of runs. He stands at first. Brunson Stockstill will move down to second. Jay Stock will come up. Stockstill's one for one and scored a run. Go ahead with your story. We got ninth grade going on. We got ninth grade football going on. You got uh, varsity football is going to be playing on May the 16th in southern Mississippi against uh, Mary G. Montgomery out of Mary Simmons, G. Alabama. Sims, yeah. Sims, Alabama, Sims, yes, sir. Uh, that's an outskirt of Mobile. Know those guys well. So yeah. that'll be a good football game. The Vikings. Of, yes, sir. Of uh, they were in, MGM. That was going to be too. down low. Brunson's going to try to swipe third, and he's going to just barely get there. That was a ball down low, uh, 1 0 to Stockstill. So. The, the Vikings actually played in the, their semifinals also. Good football team. Uh, Historically, so, they got a good squad. So yeah, uh, that'll, so, be a, that'll be a good test for the Tide. Some uh, spring football coming up for the Tide. Stockstill's going to hit that one on the nose, but right at the center fielder. Stockstill at third is going to tag up. Here comes the throw, and it's up the line. So Stockstill will score. Now Frank is caught off a of first base, but he's able to get in. So that'll be a sack fly. For J Stock, who will drive in B Stock at first for the seventh run. And we'll have one out now. And we'll turn the lineup over to Parker Helton. Still got Franklin down at first after he singled two batters ago. So here's Petey. First pitch to Parker's going to be down low for a ball, 1 0. So we've got ninth grade football coming up here in a couple of weeks or a week or so, just yes, over sir. a week. Just a little over two weeks. Yeah, in, right. In about a month or so, we got uh, yes, sir. high school football, our varsity football mm. at Southern Miss against MGM. Yes, sir. That'll and uh, we got the late game on Saturday night game. Um, Parker's going to hit that game. one at right field, but the right fielder is going to be able to move underneath it, and he will record the second out of the inning as Parker again has hit the ball three times with nothing to show for it, but just loud outs. That's going to bring Kyler King to the plate for the Tide. He'll hit with one on and two outs. His team leads 2-0. Number 10, Kyler King. Do we have any kind of early, early 
inside information on the Tide football team this year. No, I haven't uh, done a lot of practicing, but just just very early, we, what do you see? I, I see us um, having a good, strong football team. Um, we're going to have a lot of kids uh, more than what we usually had as far as playing both sides of the football, which going back is not nothing new. You know, sure. going back to what we used to do at Picayune, uh, we've just been fortunate the past couple of years to have – a majority of guys that can play one side of football. But uh, here at Picking, we're going to put our best athletes on the field to win the football game, and um, the best 11 will play. So um, we, we've yeah. been working hard in the weight room. The kids are getting in great shape. Um, so we're excited about this football team coming up. And I know that, that – uh, I don't want to say pressure – Franklin's going to swipe second base as he catches the ball down low. The, pit, the wow. catcher didn't get a good – that's beat on it, kind of kicked up. Not didn't really get away from him, but just kind of ran up him. And Franklin read it in the dirt and yeah, swiped the base. Man. Yeah, just, that's a good hard base run in there. Mm-hmm. Your team's up seven nothing, but we're not taking the foot off the gas. We still got it going here. Staying aggressive. King will step in two one count. So yeah, a, a lot of expectations. I think Todd have had coming off just a phenomenal three year run. Quite and, honestly, and, just and you phenomenal. Know, and you know, um, it's going to be words, down low three one. Things that we're hearing, you know, we're on a reloading year or right. a rebuilding year. Sure. Um, sure. Well, every that's, year is a rebuilding year in high school, yeah, right? That's, every year that's is not the case here at Picayune. We're in a reloading. We're just going to reload, and there we're going to come right at you, you know. That's, so, that's, hopefully, um, things – ball bounces our way. We get a couple calls, a couple breaks. you got to get lucky in high school football, and um, you make your own luck, and then hopefully things go well. That's right. So, ball four to Kyler Hill. Get down to first. Landon still at second. Jamie Lumpkin will step in here. So, yeah – but in all honesty, we we have to have a drop off with some talent because we've had some phenomenal talent. It just it has it's, to be at some point, well, right? Yeah, when you have three not to say guys, that it goes away, but you have to have some drop off because right, it's well, been an unusual run for a, a school our size to have that talent that we've had. Yeah, we we have been super blessed with the kids that come through Picayune, but um, it, I think it's just starting to pick up. Uh, you know. We've had a very special class. Uh, you got one is going to Stanford and Chris Davis. You had Jamonte Waller, who's an um, early graduate. He's actually at Auburn right now. Um, and then the year before that, you had uh, Xavion Coleman, who signed at ULL. So I think it's just it's just starting to pick up. You know, we got several kids going to play college, junior college football with Marion Tyson, Quentin Haynes going to Pearl River Community College. Um, you got JB McWilliams and Michael Smith going to Gulf Coast. So not, I think it's just going to get better. You know, you got Tristan Cooper coming up and uh, Darrell Smith and, and B.J. Ducree. You know, they can play some college football. It's just got to find the right spot for them. So I think it's it's only looking up for the Tide. And then you got some young kids down in the pipeline coming up that we're just really excited about. You know, you know guys like Kelvin Stallings. Uh, you're looking at uh, uh, Javen Bolden, who's going to play offensive and defensive line for us. So we're going to miss by Jamie running count 2-2. Two, we're, two. we're really excited. Really that's exciting. Awesome. That's good to hear. And that's that's kind of what I was getting at is just an early understanding of where we are. We know that it's just been a phenomenal run, but it's yeah. it's good to hear that, hey, there's still some folks in the pipeline and it's not going to dry up. Oh, right? no, no, no. Uh, that's, and then, that's, that's good and, to hear. And one of the things we started doing is doing these ninth grade springs, you know, getting the eighth graders going into the ninth grade to really – that's our future. That's so right. we start developing them now. And, and setting the tone and letting them know, hey, this is how our program is going to be run. And Coach Dog does a great job of, of leading our program. And, you know, he, it was set forth. The foundation was laid with Coach Lee and all the things that they've done. So I'm just glad to be a part of it. And uh, it's just an exciting time to be at Picking and just be at Picking and Athletics all together. Lumpkin's going to lift that one over on the right side. The first base will move over. He'll step underneath it, and he will record the th- third out of the inning, but not before the tied score one. We head to the top of the seventh. Hawks are down to the last three outs. Tide leads this one seven to nothing. Are you tired of the same old mundane service you get when you need to get an oil change for your car or truck? Do you feel like you have to be the first person there to get in line to get your oil changed that day? Tired of having to get up before the chickens to beat the crowd? Well, it's different at Pit Lane Oil Change and Picayune. J.R. Pascal and his Pit Lane crew make sure you are in and out in a timely manner. And you don't need an appointment either. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. And Saturdays from 8 a.m. till 12 noon. The Pit Lane crew inspects your vehicle to make sure the fluids, belts, lights, tire pressure, battery, and wiper blades are in good working order to keep you on the road in your ride. And they will vacuum the inside of your vehicle as a little extra touch from the crew at Pit Lane Oil Change. Come experience for yourself why people keep coming back to Pit Lane Oil Change time after time. 
They're located at 401 Highway 11 North, just three blocks north of East Canal, right by the railroad tracks. You can call us at 601-798-0017. Come experience the difference. Pit Lane Oil Change, your personal pit crew. Tommy Upton along with Coach Seth Hayden, and we got Kevin Weiss running the camera for us. Uh, appreciate him out there working hard, trying to give you some shots on the YouTube stream at PMHS Sports. And, of course, you're listening to WRJW, 1320 AM, 106.9 FM, or you can catch us on the streaming portal. Um, that stream. So we got multiple ways that you can consume us tonight. We're heading to the top of the 7th. Well, the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, where hometown means the best service or more locations to serve you. And Busby's back out there for his it. seventh inning of work. I like it. In the seventh is a strike. You know, Mr. I want to uh, ask you this. You know, you play college baseball. I I like the the fact that you have nine guys – the field you got nine guys bat more of a traditional style baseball how do you feel you know about having you know the dh and everything like that and being able to to not hit for your pitcher and, and all that kind of stuff yeah as brunson is going to hit a ball out in the right field brunson's going to come in he stays out in right field and he is going to make a diving attempt couldn't quite get there good Hustle by Brunson just couldn't quite get there. So Hopgood will be on with a single now. Right. And that's going to lead uh, Jason Knight, who will step in now here from the Hawks. And I do want to answer your question. I just want to get everybody up to speed. The first pitch tonight is in there for a strike 0-1. So to answer your question, I am a traditionalist. Yeah. And I think everybody should hit. Yeah. I've always been a National League guy, meaning, you know, not uh-huh. have a designated hitter. But I'm not also a guy that gets too spun up about that. I think it's an important part of the game. Knight's going to foul one off the inside part of his foot, so it'll be O. But if I had my preference, yeah. I think everybody would pitch and hit, or mm-hmm. everybody that would hit for themselves. And, and it does many – I guess I am old, but the game has changed quite a bit from when I played because you you didn't really – although the designated hitter was allowed, we didn't do it a whole lot. Yeah. Right? Honestly, pitchers usually hit for themselves. All right. And you had to be accountable. So if you wanted to throw inside or throw at somebody, you had to know you're going to step in the <laughs> box too, and they would throw at you. Right. Knight's going to hit that one out into right field. Brunson's going to catch it on one hop. The runners will move up. So we got two singles back to yeah. back here. Not, neither ball hit terribly hard, but got a little traffic, and this is the most traffic that uh, the Hawks have had so far. So mm-hmm. I hope that answers your question. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I was just curious, like the, you know, just – if I, th- I I knew if I threw at somebody, I was going to get a bat and step in there too. Wait. You know, and sometimes you can hide behind. Now, we don't. I, Busby does not do I, Busby's the biggest guy on the field. He'll, he'll right. throw at anybody. don't matter. But I'm saying sometimes you can do that. Right. I was just asking, you know, Busby's going the distance, and you don't see pitchers, especially in, in the major leagues, go actually a whole nine innings. And I, I got to know they're in, a, in Not anymore. But, yeah, I mean, I, is, are we getting away from the – Traditional of the game, you I know, think and so. how I think they're. I think people are. It's more science yeah, and more. You get more numbers and statistics, and it's it's what does the book say? You know, who should be hitting here, a left hander or a right hander? What what right? What is the, what do the numbers say? I do think it's a very different ball game than right. it, than it was you know back in the day, and and right or wrong, it just is what it is, and so. There is a lot more changing of pitchers than it used to be. You used to have if you had, if you had a good guy, you rode him for at least seven innings. Yeah. Now you very rarely see a starting pitcher get out of the fifth. Uh, part of that saving arms. Part of that is is starting to make moves earlier. Now uh, three, is, one, is, three is one that, count now here? Let me bring somebody yeah. up to speed. Hunter Coons in runners at first and second. Tide leads at seven. Nothing. Nobody out. We're in the top of the seventh. Go ahead. No, just you know, is is it more of a safety issue or is it the fact that we just got more aware as as. I think it's both three two now swinging a miss by Coon. Right, because you just look at it; it's happening across all sports. You know, the game of basketball has changed. That's right. Football is one of the biggest ones that's changed as far as all the player safety and everything, and uh, the rule changes coming in with that. You know, um, I, I I just when it comes to swing sports, a miss for strike three to Coon. Yeah, when it comes to sports, I'm more you know, let's play the game how the game was meant that's to right. be played. Yeah, I, and I, I'm all for safety, don't get me wrong, right? If a kid is throwing a bunch of pitches, get him out of there. So it, it's not about safety, but right. I personally think sometimes, at least, especially in the major leagues, that, that we try to think too much. Mm-hmm. You know, we try to make too many moves, and sometimes you just, if you got a hot hitter or you got a hot pitcher, you got to ride it. Right, right. Right? 
So that's going to bring up uh, Matthew Cuevas for the Hawks. He'll take the first pitch up high for a ball, 1-0. Still got runners at first and second, one out. Tide leads this one 7 nothing. Hawks down to their final two outs. As they trail, picking, as I said, 7 nothing. This is game two this of the series. This is going to be hit on the ground to King. King will flip it to Jamie. Oh, Jamie could not turn the double play, so we'll get the lead runner with a fielder's choice. And that'll put a runner at first and third. Two outs now. Number six, Landon Shields will step in here um, for the Hawks. And they're down to their final out. Tide trying to go ahead and win this series tonight if they can win this one. And they'll look to complete the sweep tomorrow back at Hancock. Now, does this lock us up for the two seed, or we still got to win the, the – I'd have the, to, um, Timmy is the numbers guy. He keeps very good track. I believe it does. But, you know, I believe it does. That if, first pitch is going to yeah. be up high for a ball. But don't quote me on that. Uh, don't quote that me on strike. that. That was a strike. That was a strike. That was a strike. Yes, Sorry. Sir. 01. Yeah. Bad. So, 01. we got the, the the series with Long Beach after this, correct? That's series with Long Beach. That is correct. So – if we if it, we if we win tonight, I believe that locks us into second. But but don't quote me. We'll now, do we Timmy still have an opportunity up. to win the region? We would. You know, but we you would, get a little we, help, we huh? would need some help. George County to lose a couple games. There's another win in there for strike 02. So Hawks down to their final strike here, first and third. They're lo- losing seven to nothing here in the top of the seventh. Now the Tide are going to play tomorrow at one o'clock. One o'clock back on the other end of Texas flat top blacktop. Flat top blacktop. I can remember. Two. In there That's for it. strike three, and what a way to end the game as T-Buzz strikes out Hunter Kuhn. We're going to take a break and allow us to gather up our numbers. Coach Seth's going to have a Sonic player of the game. You've been listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Get back in the game with Don Therapy Center. Jamison Don has the specialties and experience to get your athlete back in the game, including indoor turf, Hivamat, blood flow restriction, trigger point dry needling, and much more. Dr. Dodd and Dodd Therapy Center is also specializing in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call at 769-242-26. On it and just done an outstanding job tonight. Well, I, I sure do appreciate it, man. I've had an absolute blast. This is so this has been a real a real treat for me. I Came up here to run the music and uh, wound up working the scoreboard and getting on the radio with you, and I just had a, just an awesome time. Getting on Perry's, uh, Carrie's payroll, that's what we want. We, hey, there we, we go. We get on the Picayune uh, School District payroll. We get on P- Carrie's payroll. You'll be able to retire if we do three or four more games together. So yeah. we appreciate you stepping in. Let me give you a few numbers here. As the Tide wins this one seven to nothing, Busby certainly uh, oh, gosh. no runs, no walks. 11 strikeouts. Wow, that's absolutely. I, I'm going to let you pick here, and I'm going to give you. He is he is a contender. The other contender is Landon Franklin. Landon yes, Franklin goes two for two uh-huh. with a stolen base and scores two run. So I'm going to let you pick. Man, that's you know, a, that's, 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 that's a hard decision because, you know, here we're just sitting here talking about being, being a traditionalist of the game and seeing a pitcher go all seven innings, and Busby has done that. Um, but, you know, w- what Franklin has done, you know, stepping in as a DH spot, going two for two, um, getting that critical uh, hit right there. Right. Um, and, and, you know, he's got a heads-up play on the stolen base. You know, that ball wasn't really far past the the, uh, the catcher, and uh, he, he's read balls in the dirt, and – he advances the second base. So, you know, uh, hats off to both young men. Um, unfortunately, I will have to go with uh, Landon Franklin Landon as our Franklin. That, that, player of the game, man. Didn't just, have a bad just, choice just there. Great job. Didn't have a bad choice. Well, as I said, Ty takes this one 7 to nothing. They win the series. They'll go for the sweep tomorrow against Hancock at 1 o'clock. I don't know if that one's going to be on the air or not. We'll try to let you know and post it on social media as soon as we know. Uh, I'll be heading out of town, and I don't know if Timmy's going to try to do it or not, but we'll let you know as soon as we know. We appreciate you listening in. We know that you have choices of things that you can do on a Friday night. We appreciate you spending a few minutes here with us. Miss Kayla Stillman was the Paul's Pastry Shop um, Mardi Gras Cafe trivia question. Who was the pitcher that went, four, that went 14 consecutive scoreless innings in the major leagues? That was... Uh, Juan Marischal, and he did it from 64 through 71, 14 consecutive scoreless innings. So she's going to get to visit Paul's Pastry Shop with a $10 gift certificate. Sounds like she's got a young baby that loves to eat uh, butter crunches, and we're going to give them the opportunity to do that. And then our Paul, our uh, Sonic player of the game, 
Landon Franklin. Yeah. So the final score for the final time, seven to nothing. Tide takes this one. Looking for a great game tomorrow. Any final thoughts, Coach Seth? No, I, I just hope the Tide can keep this uh, momentum rolling. You know, that one little setback, um, those two games against George County, I hope that really doesn't get in their heads. And it, it hasn't right here, you know, this week against the Hawks. I just hope we can just keep carrying that momentum tomorrow on a Saturday game. Uh, you know, we're dealing with high school kids. You know, sometimes That's right. getting in the play for a 1 o'clock game is tough. Uh, but, you know, uh, let's keep it rolling. we got to finish out the season with Long Beach and then um, carry this momentum into the playoffs, man. I'd love, I would absolutely love to make an appearance in uh, Pearl, Mississippi for a 6A state championship representing with the Tide, man. Let's do it. You said it. Let's do it. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Tide takes this one 7 to nothing. Hey friends, camping is a spring thing, and Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune is here to get you started this spring. Whether it's RV accessories, parts, RV service, or RV sales, Pawpaw's Campers has you covered. Just call our toll-free line, 800-728-2267. That's 800-728-CAMP. Or go to our website at pawpawsniceprice.com. We're not that far from where you are. Come and see us today. Bye. Bye. 